based on a song that, that Marsha wrote. And um, it's all about rejection. It's all about, you know, the bullying that happened to some of our youth. It's all about, you know, having to come out to your family, having to be rejected by your family, being rejected by the church. And so today we thought we would kind of sort of talk about that. And I believe you had an email that you got from uh, someone in regard to that actual topic. Yeah, I... I got it from a pastor. I'm going to have to change names because, you know, I, I'm not trying to uh, put anybody on the spot. But it was a conservative pastor who has interacted with me before about, you know, my beliefs and, and his beliefs and how they differ. And he's been very gracious and open. And then his daughter came back to him. And he was ready to just love his daughter and say, we might disagree on one thing, but I love it. But his family was really rejecting of her, and he felt almost out of control with it. Like, oh my gosh, your brothers and sisters are rejecting you and saying, you know, you're not our brother, you're not our sister anymore, you're not welcome around our children, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. And and so he finally said, can you write to her? And I thought, well, it was a little interesting because. I'm used to writing to him, and when I write to people that disagree with me, I try to just keep it very, this is my experience, you know? People ask me how I stay out of as much trouble as I do, and I go, I either write about my experience or about what the Bible says. That, that way you can, you can't really argue with my experience, that's my experience. If you want to argue with the Bible, people have been doing that for two, well, 6,000 years at least, anyway, so, you know, if you ever read the Talmud, you'd know how much people argue just about the first five books. So. That's how I kind of keep it simple. But when I was writing to her, I'm going to call her Judy just because that's not her name. And I, when I was writing to Judy, I realized it was a very different perspective trying to write to Judy than it was to write to him. And so I kind of wrote a little more directly, and I was going to read you part of my answer here. Um, I said, so what I would tell Judy, I guess first of all is to remember that they are the ones to be pitied. Until we stop defending ourselves, we only bring on condemnation. I remember my pastor, uh, Reverend Elder Nancy Wilson, went to South Africa. She came back and I wrote about this. And told us a story about how the tour guides just kind of casually mentioned that there were very big baboons. I mean, big. And that they run around the city and that they're free to. There's, nobody tries to trap them. People know they're there. They're allowed to be there. You know, they're not... Nobody tries to chase them off. He just said, be careful. And she said, oh... Okay, I'm sorry, could you be a little more clear about that? Be careful. How? And he just kind of looked at her real blank and said, Don't act like a prey. And I thought, isn't that weird? Isn't that just exactly what we do? We run and the predator chases us. We panic and the predator just naturally comes in for the kill. I know this isn't easy. After being out for 30 years, I still find myself in some odd situation where I think, oh, they don't need to know, or they're going to be so disillusioned. Fortunately, that's usually pretty fleeting by now, since I found out that the truth really does set people free. And that includes the people to whom I tell the truth. We don't have to justify ourselves, because none of us are justified in ourselves. All of us are only justified by Christ's atoning death and resurrection. That's a pointless exercise. We've talked about that before. After not acting like prey, I think you really do need to have compassion for your judgmental family members. 
I know it hurts like anything. People in my own family uh, rejected me, they wouldn't have anything to do with me, wouldn't let me be around my kids, and had almost nothing to do with me for almost 15 years. Every so often, one of them would speak to me if they were sure that my partner wasn't there. But um, when they did speak to me, they acted like I was a tragedy fest, or a heretic, or um, but I had to remember that they were living with their own horrifying idea of God. They were living with a God who would send people to hell for all eternity for understanding their own doctrine. Really, they believe that. Not just about being gay, they believe that about a lot of things. And so I had to have love for that person. And then I tried to concentrate on my own walk with the Lord, and I can't concentrate, I can't emphasize this enough. Don't be so worried about what everybody else thinks. Or, Talk about your own relationship with God. Get into the Word yourself. Get into prayer yourself. Seek God yourself. That is such a hard exercise. And I've met people who are amazing at it. I had a guy one time, I'd had the worst day ever uh, on a tour, number on a, on a music tour, and we'd uh, sent our motorhome in to be serviced, and a young apprentice worker had started on his own before the other guys got there. And he jacked up this, I don't know how many times, 10 times, motorhome on my bicycle. He just took the bicycle rack and put it in the frame. And he put it up on the bicycle rack. He went over and took over one of the tires that were going to work on the front brakes. He took off one of the tires, and he had just rolled over to take off the other tire when it came down on it. It was just that tire and that angle that his head was in that saved him. And, and when it came down, they thought he was dead. Everybody in the, in the garage saw it come down and thought he was dead. So it was just that little piece that had saved his head. He was back at work in two days. Um, and the same day, my daughter had gotten into an accident on the California freeway, totaled her car, knocked the glasses right off of her face and shattered them, and walked away not even, without even a hurt neck. I mean, it was like real. California freeways aren't that big. That night, somebody on my prayer team uh, called me and said, Marsha, um, it's Reverend Chair. I just uh, wanted you to know that the Holy Spirit kept me home praying for you today. I hope everything's okay. Now, at first that went right by me just thinking, oh, wow, how cool. Somebody was praying, of course. And then I thought, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit kept you home praying for me? What would the Holy Spirit have to do? Like, how would the Holy Spirit get my attention to say, stay home all day today and pray for Justin? Yeah. I mean, that's in tune. And that's where we have to be. So the most important thing is your own walk with the Lord. You know, all the people that hate you, all the people that hate on you, the most important thing that you can do is make sure that your own heart is right with the Lord. So I ended up by saying that's my two cents. There's a mourning that goes with people who love you not understanding you. Jesus had that too who in his hands understood So he knows what you're going through. I'm hoping that you're blessed by your dad's understanding. Remember that the best proof there is that there can be real lesbian Christians is to actually be one. Contact me anytime I can help. Another great resource, and this is something that both Justin and I will tell you, is a bunch of young people on www.gaychristian.com. The host there is wonderful. Lots and lots of people way younger than me to talk to. And you can make sure that your own heart's right with God, because that's where it all starts. Well, that's all the time we have for this episode. But you know what? I, I love doing this with you, because it just is another one of those versions that shows how we've all been there and how we're taking that and reaching out to everyone else. So I encourage you to do the same. And we'll be with you here next weekend. Yep. And... You can check us out on all the sites. I won't go and name them again since a few weeks ago I named them wrong. <laughs> Didn't even know my own website. And I'm almost 30, so there you go. But anyway, we'll, we'll see you next week. And we hope you have a blessed week. And just pray for us, and we'll be praying for you. Thank you.